We're moving now on to proteins, and I don't need to stress the importance of it because you know the importance of proteins. They're the ones that make all the enzymes we've talked about thus far. But how do they fit in to our little backbone? That's what we're concerned about in biochem. First, you need to understand that proteins are made up of amino acids. And those amino acids can be ketogenic, aka make ketone bodies, or glucogenic, make glucose. Ketogenic amino acids turn into acetyl-CoA. If you recall, that was our building block for making ketones. Glucogenic amino acids turn into pyruvate and go through the pathway gluconeogenesis. Now, do you remember gluconeogenesis? That's the one that catapulted down to oxaloacetate, bounced back up, and went all the way to make glucose. So that is how proteins fit in to our backbone. So this video is just an introduction to proteins, but I wanted to take the time to go over a few things that might cause amino acid disorders. Proteins are made up of amino acids. Sometimes you have branched amino acids and you have to break those down for them to get used. And you use them and then if there's excess amino acids, if there's excess amino acids, they can go into your kidneys. And because they're a valuable commodity, most of it gets reabsorbed. Do you remember where? PCT, that's correct. That does not look right. Let me erase that, pretend that never happened. P, C, T. So that reabsorbs excess amino acids. Now, amino acid reabsorption isn't random. You have specific transporters for specific amino acids. And that's what we're gonna talk about today this whole pathway and how it can go wrong. Well, well, the first part, breaking branched amino acids into workable amino acids. If you have something called branch chain dehydrogenase deficiency, you can't break branched amino acids. And those amino acids are your isoleucine, your leucines, and your valine. Very important to note, this dehydrogenase needs thymine. If you can't break that down, you just pee it out and your urine smells very sweet. It almost smells like maple syrup. So this usually presents in kids. They'll present with vomiting. The urine will smell like maple syrup. And this is actually called maple syrup disease. How do you help the little kiddo? Well, try and avoid food that are high in isoleucine, leucine, valine. You can also give thymine, the cofactor, and hopefully helps any little bit of enzyme do its job. Next, remember excess amino acids gets reabsorbed in specific channels. If you have a deficiency in those channels, then you don't reabsorb those. You can have a deficiency in those amino acids. One of them is called heart nup disease. And that affects neutral amino acids. Neutral, like tryptophan. We're going to talk about tryptophan a little later, but tryptophan makes, helps make niacin and serotonin. How do you treat it? Try and give the person some more niacin to replenish any niacin that they're missing. Next up, let me clear the board. I'll leave that there. Next up is 
cystinuria. The name cystinuria is somewhat of a misnomer. There's actually four amino acids. C stands for cysteine. O stands for ornithine. L stands for lysine and A stands for arginine. Why is it called cystinuria if it has four amino acids? Well, so cysteine is the least soluble. So this is the one that precipitates in your urine and this is the one that gives you problems. We talked about cystinuria in our renal block. That's your cysteine crystals. Those are your hexagonal crystals. I don't know if that's six sides, but they make hexagonal crystals. And you treat it by alkaline, alkalinizing the urine with either potassium citrate, which is just a salt, or acetazolamide. One of the tests you can do, they might ask you what test you would do if you suspect this in a patient. That is your cyanide nitro test. What that does is the cyanide portion turns cysteine into cysteine and then the natural prusside binds that cysteine turns it purple. That's just a good visual way to diagnose this disorder. Okay so we talked about how amino acids fit into our glycolysis backbone. We talked about some ways where it can go wrong. That does it for this video. See you next time.